In this lesson, you're going to see an example of how to use the rotoscope tool in After Effects. I'm going to work quickly, but if you plan on following along, please feel free to pause the video at any time. We're going to roto this particular video, so the final product will have the person's hand move above the phone's user interface or screen. So let's get started. Here's the original video. I already went ahead and tracked the UI or the screen on the phone, but the problem is the hand is under the screen. Therefore, you're going to want to use the rotoscope tool to isolate the hand so that it passes over the screen. What I normally do is copy the footage layer and place the copy at the very top. Then I adjust the endpoints only to where the hand covers the screen. In this case, the starting point begins on the frame where the edge of the hand is about to cover the screen and the end point is a frame where the hand leaves the screen because this is the portion of the footage you want to roto. Now you're ready to use the rotoscope tool. So go to your toolbar and select the rotoscope tool. Then select the layer you want to roto and double click the layer which is the frame where the hand comes in contact with the screen. Once I've double clicked the layer I want to roto, what I'm going to do is go frame by frame and roto adjust the hand. Make sure you focus on your object. You can adjust the size of your roto brush by holding down the control key. Then using your mouse, left click and move your mouse up or down. Now I'm going to use a roto brush and roughly outline the hand. Depending on your footage, when you first begin to use a roto brush, it will roto parts of the footage that you don't want. In this case, I want to roto just the hand but and not include the parts of the background. Therefore, I will subtract the unwanted areas by holding down the Alt key and outlining the areas that I don't want. The roto brush will turn red in order to subtract the unwanted areas. Once I'm done with this frame, I'm going to go to the next frame and repeat this process of using the rotoscope tool on the hand and subtracting the unwanted areas around the hand. You can press the page down key on your keyboard to move forward one frame and the page up key to move back one frame. As you can see, I'm quickly going frame by frame and fine tuning the areas where the hand is on top of the screen because this is the part of the footage you want to see above the screen or the UI layer of the phone. Make sure your edges are fairly smooth and not jagged. Sometimes when you hold the Alt key and try to subtract areas you don't want, the rotoscope tool subtracts footage that you need like parts of the hand itself, but just go back and draw over the portion of the hand that you want again and the rotoscope tool will somewhat over time learn exactly what you're trying to roto. So I'll go ahead and roto the rest of the segment. Now that I've rotoed the hand, I can go ahead and pre-render the main video on the left. As you can see, I still need to smooth the edges of the roto. What I can do now is make some adjustments to the roto by adjusting the effects controls on the left. For instance, you can feather the edges of your roto by adjusting the feather settings to, let's try 20. You can also adjust the contrast or adjust the shift edge settings to define the edges of your roto as you can see here. Sometimes you can reduce the chatter of your roto to smooth the edges. Furthermore, if you want to blend the edges of your roto with the background, or in this case blend the hand more with the screen underneath, then check the Use Motion Blur checkbox to blur the edges. Now if I take a look at the hand with the screen, it's starting to look a little better. At this point, you can make more adjustments to your roto with the roto brush. Now if you notice on the left of your effects controls, you'll see there are several settings that have been disabled. These settings belong to a tool called the Refine Edge Tool, which will be the final tool I want to use to complete this roto. So if you go to the toolbar and hold down the roto brush tool, you'll be able to select the Refine Edge Tool. This tool can be used to also blur and blend the edges of your roto with the background. You can use this tool by drawing over the edges of your roto, which will in turn reveal how much it's blending the edges with the background underneath. I can adjust my roto to make sure the finger does not get cut off while it's in motion. Now I can go frame by frame and draw over the edges I want to blend in with the background. The Refine Edge tool is very useful on footage and motion like this example. Another helpful rotoscope feature is to change the viewing options of your roto such as viewing your roto with an alpha overlay, using the current alpha boundaries option with the pink edges, or even viewing your roto on alpha. Finally. When you're finished refining the edges, you can pre-render your footage. It's looking better. Ideally, when we roto, it's best to roto footage that's not too fast because as you may have experienced with this example, it's tough to roto frames where the hand is very blurry because it's so fast. 
This is why it's best to capture footage that has its subject moving at a reasonable pace. Now I can go ahead and repeat this process with the rest of the footage whenever the hand moves across the screen again. Once you're done, pre-render the footage to make sure you're satisfied with your roto work. Once you're satisfied with your roto, double click on each roto layer and click on the freeze button to finalize your roto. Make sure you do this to each layer. If you still need to make more adjustments to your roto, just click on the freeze button again, but don't forget to click it when you're finished. Finally, pre-render your final video and that's it.